The Zodiac Files Interview Volume 8. Mike Morford, A.K. Morph. Uh, he's got his new suspect. I think this is one of the uh, best new suspects in a while. Making his return. We actually had him on for the uh, Zodiac uh, film review with Ned, and that was awesome. Morph, how you doing? I'm doing good. How you doing, Ross? Great, man. Been uh, been rocking and rolling over here. Got Zodiac Files Episode 4 coming soon, so I'll definitely have some, uh, some pre-non-canonical uh, questions for you um right off the bat so i know that you kind of sunsetted your uh your old uh zodiac website and you've got the links to your your many podcasts now we'll shout those out um was there any reason why you got rid of the site you just wanted to move on to promoting the pods and stuff like that it, it was uh a lot of upkeep and a lot of work and a lot of technical stuff on the background and then For additional sure. costs that i just i don't know it's just sort of I, you know, I had redone the site to give it a fresher look and a fresher uh, feel. And um, there were a lot of technical glitches that went along with changing it over. Um, so I just, I, I more or less got bored with it. And I said, you know what, there's, you know, there's enough people on here that have been able to collect enough stuff and anything they want to save. They've got plenty of time. If I shut it down now and I give them like a two month notice, they can save everything they want to save and back up what they want to back up. And, you know, Tom's forum is big enough, you know, to have everyone um, come there and, and find what they want to find there. So I just, you know, it was just time to do it. And I still own uh, the domain ZodiacKiller.net. And at some point in the future, I might put a, a working Zodiac site up there again. But just it's not on the it's not on the front burner right now. Yeah, for sure. It makes perfect sense. Uh, Morph is uh infamous for handing out treasure trolls he's he's 100 immune to trolling and uh I, one of the criticisms i've seen is like why did morph uh take down his website if he thinks that you know his suspect is the zodiac it's like for one morph has the podcast and he's totally outlined pretty much every detail so it's not like your resort your research isn't cataloged anywhere you know what i mean i think you've done well cataloged everything for uh for this point and uh, you know, I lost track on, on Tom's site how many posts are on there in the the Mac thread over there, and that's a yeah. you know pretty big resource in its own. So Massive. there's plenty plenty of stuff uh, cataloged at this point. Right, it, it's the it's the biggest thread ever. Right, last time I checked, if it if it yeah, that's it's still the case. Ten thousand, I forget how many posts. Ten thousand posts or something like that. I I lost track. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you guys can you guys can head in there, morph. Uh, you know answers questions there and uh shoots down some of the uh less intelligence ones uh, i want so first off the bat i want everybody to go check out the zodiac speaking podcast with morph and rich if you assuming if you're in the space you guys have already seen it but like i always tell people if you want the full story of the case you go check out the zodiac speaking podcast because you guys literally broke down every detail in uh, each episode and of course you had that last episode uh where you kind of did your mac duff highlight and you had your uh, geo profiling uh, uh, expert on there with you as well. I thought that was an excellent episode. I, you know, I, whether you, you think my suspect is Zodiac or not, I thought it was good input to get professionals that do this stuff that work on these kind of cases. I thought it was good to have them on to sort of explain mm -hmm. their rationale between when they're looking at, you know, whether it's um, a geo profiler, whether it's a criminologist, just sort of giving you uh, – an insight as to what they're looking at and talking about the case in general. So mm -hmm. whether or not Mac is Zodiac is sort of doesn't matter. Um, sure. And, and, you know, we're, I'm going to have another episode coming up soon uh, on a lot of DNA related stuff as it may relate to the Zodiac case mm -hmm. to give people a, uh, a good perspective on how the, you know, genealogy works, how the uh, DNA or lack of DNA, how that's examined. Um, so I think that will be pretty enlightening too and, and see if there's really any hope for the Zodiac case as far as DNA. But I'm going to have a DNA expert on that's going to sort of break some of that stuff down. So that should be interesting. Yeah, no, I think that's an excellent topic because there's a lot of conjecture about which DNA was where at which crime scene and then fingerprints as well. There's there's a, uh, a whole lot going there. Uh, it was just mentioned in the chat. I want to shout that out as well. Uh, Citizen Detective with uh, Morph and his crew is an amazing pod. They have. I watched the Zodiac series you guys did. I watched Sherry. I also watched the Texarkana Phantom you guys did with Ned. 
Um, I want to check out your Lizzie Borden episode because I'm from New Hampshire, which is right across the border from Mass. So I've uh, got a little history in New England myself. <clears throat> and we do we do a lot of different interesting cases there. You know, I, Zodiac in the grand scheme of things nowadays just makes up a very small part of what I do. I you know do this for a living, so I'm covering a lot of different cases and stuff. So um, Zodiac's always got that little special piece of interest and in, and in, you know part of me is always into that but there's so many other cases I work on that you know and on Citizen Detective it, the cool thing about that show is we sort of get to round table discussion it with experts and witnesses and people connected to the cases and you know we have the amateur citizen detectives in the room sort of spitballing ideas at the same time we're recording so mm -hmm. it's it's very interesting from from that aspect yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I really like uh, Susanna's uh, input on that, too. Uh, she brings uh, a lot of good stuff. So uh, without further ado, if you guys are all ready to rock, let's uh, let's get into this Zodiac space. We'll be getting into morph uh, suspect and, you know, the geo profiling, the tactic morph used to uh, to locate it and all that stuff. But right off the rip, I want to start with something that um, you and Rich covered on the on the Zodiac speaking pod, which is this is just something that just sticks out to me and maybe it's nothing but you guys know me i kind of like to focus on those kind of like weird random facts that don't add up and this is the the missing shell or supposed missing shell at uh, lake herman road because I, I just there's something different about lake herman and you know in my opinion it's maybe it's the mistakes of a, of a new killer trying to you know get their grasp on what they're doing but um you know, obviously you have like Betty Lou, like kind of seemingly, you know, running away from the crime and getting shot in the back. And then, you know, you have this count of the shells and then um, just just break down for my audience. I know you guys covered it on, on your pod, but just this this thing about the missing shell at Lake Herman. <laughs> so, I mean, the whole just I'm picturing the sketch in, in my mind as we're talking about it. So like the layout of the shell casings where they're found, where they weren't found. Um, you know, they just recently too on Tom's forum, I was sort of uh, debating somebody as to why those shells would be in the position they, they were. Um, but as far as missing things, uh, you know, I, I guess we could theorize about stuff like that all day as, as to why there would be something missing. I sp spoke to a relative of one of the investigators at that scene and they told me specifically that they had taken home as a souvenir uh, a shell casing from that scene so you know i don't know how that plays into it but you know I, you know i don't i'm i don't think i've ever named this this person before but i mean it's it's been so long i mean it was uh it was butterbach um his a family member of his told me flat out that he had taken home a souvenir uh in the form of a casing so obviously things uh back then maybe weren't investigated like they are today they didn't use the same procedures you know that was a big case for them and you know i, I don't know if thinking was, yeah I, yeah i don't know if the thinking was hey there's a bunch of casings here so i'm just going to take one of them home as a souvenir um you know it just you know, it, it just wasn't handled properly and secured properly. Um, even the, the bullets themselves, um, I don't know what the status of, of those are. You know, I there was a case in Alameda in 1967, a double murder that I thought seriously could be Zodiac. It was the MO was so similar to Lake Herman Road mm -hmm. that the uh, and a cold case investigator there reached out to Solano County to check their, their, um, bullet evidence in, in the Zodiac case to see if it could be, could have been the same weapon. Uh, but the, the bullet that they shared with them or the images of the bullet, whatever it was, it was so poor condition that they couldn't even determine anything. Um, <laughs> they could, couldn't link the cases because the bullet that they, you know, Solano gave them or the pictures of the bullet Solano gave them was just, it was terrible condition. So, um, so everything from casings to bullets, um, I don't know what the condition is. I don't know what the chain of custody is, but you know, that case, you know, the Lake Herman road case is one that's always had some issues one way or the other, as far as, you know, all the way from thinking, was it really a Zodiac that did it to um, chain of custody with, with the evidence and stuff at the scene. And then you've got the, 
the bullet that's supposedly found that falls out from Betty Lou's dress, like in pristine condition at the hospital. I mean, you get weird, weird stuff like that too. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's all a little bit of a mystery there at Lake Herman Road. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think it doesn't help that Zodiac waits until after Blue Rock Springs to take credit. You know, as you, as you said, it kind of adds to the, uh, the mystique and the mystery. Now, um, I thought on Zodiac speaking, you said that, uh, that something was taken as a souvenir from the uh, from the scene, but it sounds like you got you got a little bit more if it if it actually was the it, it was the it, it was a right shell there. casing. Okay, okay, it was so, a shell yeah. Casing. That's yeah, that's that's super interesting, man. Maybe maybe it's nothing. Maybe it's just someone taking a souvenir, but it's like you know, kind of kind of one of those mysteries. Um, so it's it's amazing to me that you know colbert comes out with gary francis post and fox news and newsmax runs away with it and, and goes crazy and then you come out with uh mcduff who i think is is probably the best new suspect and it doesn't get nearly that amount of, of of media hype um just break us down through and i know you've been through this several times but just for my audience just break us down through the geo profiling technique and how you arrived at uh you know zeroing in on on William McDuff, Andrew. Yeah, yeah, and and well, first off, let me just say something too about like the post phenomenon, the uh, attention, yeah. something like that got. You know, I could have called a press conference, released an, a, a you know a a news release to the yeah. public saying, "Hey, I've solved this case and sent it out all over the place." I could have done something like that, but the problem is, right. once you do that, you, you can't go back. You know, some right. people you're stuck right. with that. Whether it's whether it turns out to be right or not, and whether it turns out to be flawed, you're never going to distance yourself from that. So, like yeah. I've said, that I believe 100% that Mac is Zodiac, but I've never called a press conference to say, "Hey, I've solved the case and I can prove Mac is the Zodiac." So it's, yeah. it's a little bit different with them, where they took that initiative to to go out of their way to sort of get some press attention. Um, but getting back to your question, you know, I I for a, the longest time. I thought Zodiac hailed from Riverside. He had to be connected to Riverside. And I, I spent, I, I couldn't even tell you how many hours of my life I spent looking for suspects and pouring through cross-referencing phone books and, and things from Riverside to see who turned up in Vallejo. Uh, I, I believe 100% that Zodiac lived in Vallejo. Uh, and I had thought that he lived in, in Riverside. So I thought if I could find somebody that had a connection to both, um, that would be pretty interesting. And I found a few people, yeah. but nobody that really, I believe was Zodiac. But then, um, I was talking to a, uh, a law enforcement friend of mine who, who does homicide cases. And, you know, we were talking a little bit about Zodiac and he said, well, you know, for a fact that Zodiac was in Vallejo, you don't know for a fact that he was in Riverside. So why don't you just mm -hmm. focus your attention on the area you know he was and I, you know, I took that advice and i said okay mm. let me just put riverside on the back burner for now and and pretend i don't know there's a riverside connection at all so i just started looking around um in vallejo for people um and there the, my i had a theory that he, when he when he shot uh Majo and Farron, uh you know he had left and then came back you know mm -hmm. five ten minutes later i had a, a theory that maybe he didn't have his gun with him and he went home real quick to get it. Um, so I, I thought in that time, how far could he have driven to a house and then gotten a gun and then came back. And mm -hmm. it was only so far that he could have gone in that amount of time. And I started looking at homes in the area close to the golf course and there wasn't any, it wasn't built up back then. There was hardly any mm -hmm. houses out there. So I, I sort of, in my mind, determined there's no way he could have left, got to a house, came back with a gun in time to have been there in, in that time. So I sort of said, okay, that that's weird. Uh, you know, that doesn't make sense. So I don't know where he went, but it, it doesn't seem like he went to a house. But then I started thinking about the phone call um, Zodiac made, you know, after Blue Rock Springs. You know, he doesn't make this call for 40 minutes yep. when it only takes 10 minutes to drive to that phone booth. Um so if, if I could see him on the way out of town, driving back to San Francisco or wherever he came from, stopping that phone booth, making the call and then driving off. But he doesn't. He waits a full 40 minutes. So that was a clue to me. I said, that's that's weird that somebody's going to hang around. That's not from Blay. It's just going to hang around there all that time right. Um, right. And, and wait that long to call. 
So, um, you know, I started thinking, what if, you know, I'm trying to put myself in the killer shoes. I wouldn't want to be driving around with a gun in my car that I just used to shoot these people. Because mm-hmm. if you get pulled over, it's late at night. There's not many people around. I don't know about you, but when I drive down the street late at night and I see a cop, I sort of slow down and I get anxious that they're going to pull me over for some reason. Um, Especially back then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because on, it's it, you know? exactly. <laughs> and and on the night of a murder, no less, uh, you know, a right. shooting. Um, so yeah. you think they might just pull somebody over randomly. So I started thinking, what if he doesn't have a car? What if he walked to that phone booth to make that call? Because that, that would explain to me the, the missing 30 minutes that he... Um, could put his gun away, um, park his car. You know, if he had any blood splatter spatter coming back off the, you know, shooting Majel or whatever, he could have cleaned up and just put all the stuff away that ties him to the crime and then walked over to that phone booth. Then if anybody catches him, he's just a guy walking in his neighborhood. Um, no gun, no car, no bloody clothes or anything. And then I thought, okay, if he makes this call, somebody like Zodiac, he loves the attention from the police. He loves toying with the police. How great would it be if he just makes this call, walks to his house, and then peeks out the window and watches the cops when they trace this call and go to that phone booth? So Mm -hmm. I started looking at everybody in that area, and I started sort of putting on paper every house that was like within a quarter mile of that phone booth. Um, I went through the mailbox. I went through the um, Polk's directory street by street, and I found out as I started writing down names, most of the uh residences in in that area or most of the addresses in that area were businesses they weren't homes um so i started Mm -hmm. thinking okay there's not many businesses that are going to be open at you know on fourth of july one you know one o'clock in the morning um so i started plotting down residences and there weren't many and then i was able to sort of get other information okay who lives at each of these residences uh and then i would rule them out if i could if i came to the conclusion that they were hispanic uh, or they were African American or Asian, whatever. I could. There were certain things I would rule them out right away, and then I I really whittled down to a, a very small list, a, a handful of homes where somebody actually lived close to that phone booth, and one of them was uh, William Andrew. Um, mm-hmm. So I found his picture, um, and when I found it, I mean he was a crew cut guy, heavy set with glasses. Which I didn't really get excited about because, you know, a million guys look like back then. So yeah. I just said, OK, you know, he at least looks enough like the Zodiac description. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. So I said, let me let me take the next step and get my hand on some of his handwriting. So I sent away to get some of his handwriting. And I was hoping that when I got the handwriting back, it would look nothing like him. And I would just scratch him off the list. When I got the handwriting back, I was like, whoa, this is amazing. It's very similar to Zodiacs. It's got mm-hmm. the same slant. Um, some of the letters are nearly identical. Um, so that just piqued my interest even more. Um, so I started really digging to him at that point. And, you know, that's when I discovered he's five foot eight, he's 200 pounds, you know, physically he's got a large round face. He's got glasses. Mm -hmm. He's, you know, 387 feet from that phone booth, um, Mm -hmm. all these different things. And then, you know, I had, uh, Dave Aranchak was helping me. He's really good at digging stuff when, when I found, Uh, that Mac has had a site, a website uh, when he was older, when he was married decades later. Um, Dave helped me dig on that site a little bit. And he had uh, lots of different links to lots of different pieces of this website. And I didn't have time to go through all of them. But Dave's actually the one that found uh, a post that his wife made that after he di- he died, she went through his stuff and she found a, a code book in his uh, possessions. And she made a post about it on on there, and Dave captured it, and it basically said that that was the second copy of that book. He liked it so mm-hmm. much that he had multiple copies of it, which to me, I was like, somebody likes a code book so much that they've had multiple copies of it. It just, you know, yeah. so I was really, now I've got a guy that looks like Zodiac physically, matches the descriptions. Um, you know, he's got handwriting, though, so, and he likes codes and ciphers. You know, then I, I go even further and I find out, OK, you know, timeline wise, um, I, I sort of looked at what he was doing and he graduated college in 1968 um, and then sort of drops off the face of the earth, as, at least on paper, for the most part. Um, mm-hmm. There's not much record of him and all his friends that he didn't really have friends. He had college roommates that he associated with. 
1968, they sort of all started careers and got married and got engaged and all this stuff. And he was sort of left out. He was sort of left alone to fend for himself. Um, and, and they all lost touch with him and they, they would only see him at the occasional wedding here and there when mm -hmm. one of them get married, they'd all be invited and they'd catch up at that point, but they didn't hang out with him. So he was sort of off the radar for a while. And then the next thing I, I noticed was that he had taken a job with the um, state in 1971, right at the time the Zodiac letters ended, he took a job with the state. Um, and then the Zodiac didn't write again until 1974. And well, I found out that right when Zodiac started writing again in 1974, he um, got engaged and then he got married later in 1974. And then there wasn't another confirmed Zodiac letter after that. Um, you know, so I, I, you know, I know in, in researching some of these killers, like with the Golden State Killer, for example, I had talked to several detectives in the case and, you know, they felt they didn't say this publicly at the time, but they knew that behind the scenes, they felt they felt there were stressors, major life events mm -hmm. around some of the murders, like the Golden State Killer killed somebody in 1981. He didn't kill again until 1986. And they were thinking something big happened in those two years, 1981, 1986, mm -hmm. a new job a child, mm -hmm. something had changed in their lives. Well, sure enough, Joseph D'Angelo had one daughter born in 1981 and the next one was born in 1986. And they, mm -hmm. they happened to coincide with, with the murders. So I knew that life events could have been tied to Zodiac, could have explained his reason for stopping and starting writing in those two, two years, 71 and 74. And it just so happens that Mac, you know, he takes this job with the state in 71 in 1974, when Zodiac starts writing again, he's just getting engaged, and then he's getting married, and then we don't hear from Zodiac again. Um, and unless you believe that the 1990 Eureka card, for example, is is Zodiac, um, mm -hmm. well, I, ne I didn't never put too much stock into that. And again, at the end of the day, it is an unverified letter from Zodiac. Um, there's no confirmation that it's from him. But the interesting thing is, it's just another tidbit for him, is that. Um, he basically, he, Zodiac's home territory is Vallejo, but here's Eureka where this card comes from mm -hmm. about 200, 200 miles from Eureka or, uh, from Vallejo, it's mm -hmm. sort of out in the middle of nowhere. It, it's, it's really rural out there and it's a lot of woods and, and that kind of thing. Um, well, what do we know about Zodiac? He, that's not really his area. So why would a Zodiac letter come from there? You know, so I thought that would be interesting to see if Mac was out there for anything. Did he own land out there or that kind sure. of thing? Well, sure. I did a property search and sure enough, he owned property out there that he bought in, I think it was 1981, if I remember correctly, and owned up until the mid uh, 1990s. So he had a tie out there. It was just one more link between Mac uh, and, sure. and, and then I, and then somebody else um, messaged me and said, Hey, did you see this? And this was something I had overlooked. They found a uh, an address in San Francisco in 1971 for a Mac Andrew, mm -hmm. um, and I I had missed it, and it was a San Francisco address on Debachi Avenue. Well, Debachi Avenue is literally a stone's throw across the park from where Richard Radetich was shot, which we know Zodiac referenced in that one letter. Yeah, uh, whether he shot him or not is a different story, but he referenced him in that. He would have he would have known about it regardless. Yeah, yeah, it, it, was a, it, yeah. <clears throat> it was a stone's throw from Duachi Avenue's uh, the address where Mac Andrew was listed at, as living. Um, so all of this stuff sort of collectively, it just just kept building up in my mind. I started saying, well, what point do you just say, you know, one or two coincidences is fine, but just, it just keeps on adding up and continues. Yeah, it's enough parallels. Um, to me, it was just I, I just started saying to myself, this is too much to be coincidence at this point and i you know i i concluded for myself that this guy was zodiac because i just don't believe there's that many coincidences and then you know he he was obviously into firearms he was a firearm instructor um you know he had the code interest you know in multiple multiple um uh times he had this book 
according to his wife. Now, that again, his wife didn't meet him until 1974. So she right. doesn't know anything about his life before that other than what she's been told or he right. told her or she learned secondhand because she mm-hmm. she wasn't even in California uh, back then. So, mm-hmm. um, so anything she said, and she was kind enough to respond to some stuff on Tom's website, but anything she said from that time is secondhand information. She doesn't right. know for sure. Um, right. and she, she tried to say, well, that Mac Andrew in San Francisco isn't Mac because he never used his name, Mac Andrew on any official records. Um, but then I found a, a listing for Mac in Chico, r- which we know he was there in college and he was listed yeah. as Mac Andrew. So, mm-hmm. you know, it wasn't listed as William Andrew. So, um, right. we know that he used Mac Andrew more than once. So, you know, and she also wasn't sure about some of the dates, she thought that maybe he worked at a hardware store or sold insurance in Contra Costa or both. Um, I looked up records of insurance salespeople. He'd never held an insurance sales license in the state of California. Um, he supposedly worked at a hardware store. She wasn't sure which one. Um, but she mentioned specifically that she thought it was Contra Costa County. The interesting thing there is there was some possible Zodiac activity in Contra Costa County during that time that she thought he was working there. And that, you know, if you recall the, uh, the teacher that was, uh, poisoned and yeah, I, I have that on my notes. I was, yeah, somebody tried to poison him and said he was Zodiac. That's Contra Costa County. So yeah, that's crazy. it, it, It could just be a coincidence, but again, it's just one more coincidence on a bunch of other coincidences. Sure, sure. And and, and that's, you know, again, just back to my previous statement, it's like they come out with Gary Francis Post because he has lines on his forehead. They basically have no explanation of anything else. And then there's the whole story about we found his guns on the mountain, but we're all in his 50s, so we can't hike up to go find him. But then you have like you have Mac in the right place, you know, in the right town. And then you have all these other, it's just, it's way more to chew on than, than post. And it, it's just hilarious to me how the media said made such like a, a big deal about posts where I'm like morph Scott Mac. And it's on paper. It's a way better fit. It's a way better fit. I'm not saying Max, the Zodiac, but on paper, it is a way better fit. You know what I mean? Um, and, and again, I'm being cautious. I, I'm not calling a press right. conference. I'm not writing a book saying I've solved the case. Mac is right. the Zodiac because sure. I still want more. I still, I still want more before I go out yep. there and make that claim because you can't walk that back. You know, right. these people that said this guy's got lines on his forehead, he's got to be Zodiac. They're never mm-hmm. going to come back from that. That that no. always going to be attached to that. So, mm-hmm. I want more before I write a book or do a tour saying I've solved the case. I want sure. more solid stuff. I've even offered rewards. Mm-hmm. You know, I've done different social media posts in the Bay Area for anyone that knew Mac. Um, to come forward with information, to come forward with whether it was r- more writing, videos, photos, anything that they could help me with, anybody that knew them to come forward. I've offered rewards, um, and I haven't had anybody reach out and, and come to me with that. Although I did, I was able to contact a few of Max college roommates that helped me with some information um, and mm-hmm. helped me piece some stuff together. So luckily, I was able to reach them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, all I'm saying is like, I just feel like you gave the Zodiac community way more to chew on on Mac than those, you know, they posted the, I I don't want to harp on it, but they posted the picture of the shadow. And they said that that was Zodiac taking a picture of himself with the hood on with the shadow. It's like, come on, man, like this is, that's a serious reach. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just crazy. Uh, Yeah. I have a bunch of follow-up questions. You uh, you got way ahead of me on McDuff, and, and we'll come back to him, but really appreciate all the stuff you just gave us. So just going back to the letters, do I, I like Eureka a lot, you know, because of the, the Groucho Marx reference, you know, that feels like, you know, Gilbert and Sullivan. It, it feels very, in you know, in Zodiac's lane. Um, after The Exorcist, do you feel that only, you know, Mac only wrote, those main tranche of letters and then all the later kind of unauthenticated stuff, or are you not really into all the later stuff? I've talked about it with Rich. Yeah. So like, like Rich and I uh, have, you know, a lot of people think just because we did a podcast together that we all, we agree on a hundred percent of everything. We don't, that was definitely not the case, but we were respectful of each other to look at different ideas. Rich thinks a lot of the letters after, you know, 74 were Zodiac where I was Mm -hmm. sort of, not really as open to that, but sure. um, I don't put as much stock 
in anything after 1974 as I do 69 to 74. Uh, sure. They officially verified stuff. But again, um, some of the other letters after that, to me, just with my untrained eye, just I look at them, I it doesn't look like Zodiac. It looks like somebody tried to make a, you know, a, an imitation of Zodiac. Sure. Um, the Eureka one is interesting just because Mac lived there and it's so far away from Vallejo. Right. That it's just odd that if, if that turned out to be a real Zodiac letter, and again, it's unconfirmed that it is, but if it turned out to be one, what are the chances that it's way out in Eureka and then Mac owns property out there? So yeah. that one, yeah. obviously, I, ha I have interest in because of that. But at the end of the day, yeah. unless it's authenticated as a, you know, official Zodiac correspondence, you know, it's it's just an interesting thing. It's to me, it's nothing more than that at this point. Sure, sure. I'm just I'm just wondering how far you're uh, you're willing to go on the letters. Uh, I like Captain Jay's point here. Maybe Zodiac sent the 90 Eureka card because he didn't like the New York Zodiac killer stealing his name. I mean, we we know Zodiac doesn't like his uh, headlines being stolen. So I could yeah, I could see I could see that. The timing's interesting, and the one thing that's interesting about that letter, which makes me think it could be a Zodiac letter, is you know, if it was just somebody that wanted to pretend they were Zodiac and get some attention, why wouldn't you mention Zodiac in the card any place? It doesn't sure. mention Zodiac in there at all, which to sure. me makes it seem like maybe it is Zodiac. And, right. you know, we know that he wrote some letters before that, that he didn't call himself Zodiac to the, that were Ooh. nabbed by the, uh, the Chronicle. Um, so maybe he was just trying to slip something in the taunt, somebody mess with what he, whatever Jolly was, he was getting out of it without saying I'm Zodiac. Um, and they just happen to catch it, you know. So it is interesting from that because you would think mm -hmm. somebody that wants you to think it's Zodiac and it really isn't, they're going to mention, hey, this is I'm Zodiac, and that didn't happen. Sure, sure. I, it almost reminds me of uh, like the concerned citizens letter. You know, a lot of a lot of people think the concerned citizen letter was Zodiac, and then even even in my opinion, like the the red phantom letter, like I I could totally see that being zodiac because he's got that like snarky sarcastic tone you know he's ripping on the uh the, the movie review critic or, or or whatever um so it kind of always like fits that like taunting uh zodiac tone if, if you will mm -hmm. um but uh yeah it's okay let's let's jump oh one more uh follow-up question before we jump back into the list uh i'm just wondering your opinion on the tar box story about the uh the, the merchant marine co coming to into his office like the so-called confession do you do you think there's anything to that or is it a random guy <laughs> i've i've always been a little bit suspicious about that story it just sounds kind of yeah wishy-washy it's just enough to pique your interest but of course there's nothing there um yeah. to to really chew on yeah say. yeah exactly yeah. so yeah it's just an interesting story to me at the end of the day but with nothing sure. there to to verify it happened or if it did happen was it really zodiac yeah, I mean, my whole uh, correlation there is that uh, he says it was a merchant marine, and then um, uh, with the nineteen, uh, not the Chester Clark like Klingel thing with the uh, photograph of the keys, like his profession was like also a merchant marine. So maybe maybe that's nothing, but uh, it does seem like the whole merchant marine theme uh, did come up, you know, a few times throughout the. Yeah, and then you had the uh, Maritime Academy right there in Vallejo. A lot of people. Mm -hmm thought that maybe he was there or maybe he was in the mm -hmm. military and he was out on on a ship someplace during the you know all that stuff's obviously possible but at the end of the day i don't think there's any evidence that says one way or another whether he was in the merchant marines yeah agreed i just you know just it's one of those things that seem to come up a few times you know whether it is or isn't something um let's address this our boy nick just said is it Mac too young to be the Zodiac? What about the shoe size? I'm, I'm not too worried about the shoe size. That's pretty straightforward. But uh, I do want to say what what more suspect changed for me. Um, you know, I was really stuck on that Presidio Heights sketch of, you know, Zodiac being 35 to 45. Like I was really stuck on that through years of my research. But, you know, things that Morphs pointed out and just general case things that I picked up like, uh, just correct me if I get anything wrong, Morph, because you're the expert. But when Nancy Slover has the phone call, she said, like, it was a younger sounding voice. Uh, doesn't Michaud say he was like 20 to 30 looking? And then Brian Hartnell again says it's a younger sounding voice. So uh, the data actually, you know, it, it's very inconsistent on, on Zodiac's uh, age. And that's what that's what Mac changed for me a lot. Well, yeah, so Mac was... Um... 
in his mid twenties. He was born in 1945, so he would have been 24 uh, for Blue Rock Springs. Mm-hmm. Um, and Mike Majot said that Zodiac looked 26 to 30. Everybody likes to say, "Oh, Ma- Ma- you got to throw out Majot's statements because he's not a good witness." Uh, people just love to just pick and choose what witnesses they're going to listen to and which ones they're going to dismiss. Oh, yeah. Um, it, it's, it's sort of like, okay, he doesn't fit my idea of what Zodiac is. So we can't use his, his, uh, mm-hmm. thing. Whereas me, I want to listen to all the witnesses and at the end of the day, just lay it all on paper right, and it agreed. is what it is. People pick Same. and choose and say, no, we, we can't listen to Majo. But Majo said 26 to 30 years old, large round face. Mm-hmm. Max got a large round face and mm-hmm. he was 24. Um, would, and interesting by the way, and this was something that somebody else pointed out to me, but it was true. If you look at college yearbooks, high school yearbooks from the 1960s, guys people look way a lot older. older. They look looked a lot older. older. So <laughs> I'm looking yeah. at them, and they, some of those guys look like they're 40 years old, and they're, they're like 17, 18 years old. Yeah, so exactly. To me, I'm thinking, okay, you know, especially sometimes too, if you if you're heavy set, you're going to look older. If you if you have glasses, you might look older. So to me, I'm thinking, you know, he could have looked older for that reason too. But the, the one thing about Pacific Heights, um, people always sort of think that that sketch is like a digital photo of Zodiac that he sat down for a sketch artist yeah, yeah. two feet away from him and, and his face was drawn. Like it's a they saw this guy from 50 feet away at night. Yeah. Um, so I challenge anybody that has 2020 eyesight like me to go out at night 50 feet away and look at somebody and then have somebody do a sketch and see yeah. how close you are. I think you could see, okay, it's a it's a heavy set guy. He's got a crew cut. He's got glasses. But how much detail can you really tell? Maybe that's that it. You know, from 50 the widow's feet away peak and the lips. Uh, I, I mean, there's certain things you could see. Um, so, uh, an age description, you know, ears, nose, you know, every every little detail. There's bound to be something that's not perfect. So. You know, I sort of sort of dismissed that. But then, you know, you go back to Hartnell and Slate. They didn't see Zodiac, but they spoke with him. And they both said he sounded like he was in his 20s. Um, I I mean, so you you really have Blue Rock Springs, a description in his 20s, Lake Herman Road or or, um, excuse me, Lake Berryessa description in his 20s. It's not till you get to Pacific Heights that you've got the older description. Presidio and some right. some people, yeah, Presidio Hoods. And some people yeah. like to um, uh, point out, well, Falk said this and Falk said that. And I'm I'm not a big supporter of Falk because I, yeah, I think I he's, to be honest with you, I'm just not a, I don't think he's a good cop. I don't think you can be at a murder scene and not stop someone. This, and not, well, not, not, not even not stop someone. I don't blame him for that if, if that really happened because they're yeah. looking for a black male. Time is of the essence. Yeah. They see a white guy walking that looks nothing like the description that went the out. Bad APD, yeah. yeah. But yeah. when you hear on the radio and the, he meets Palisade at the intersection and the, it's corrected to a, a, a guy with crew cut and glasses, you immediately say, oh, my God, I just saw him. Yeah. You, you would come forward. You'd be involved in a sketch creation. Yeah. You'd come out that night and say it, and people say, well, we don't know that he didn't. Well, we do know that his first mention of it that we see on paper anywhere is 30 days later when he sends that memo. Yeah, it's like he's reporting later. it for the first time. He doesn't say, yeah. hey, uh, you know, I, I reported this, and, uh, you know, I sat down before, and I, I gave a description. He's writing that memo as if it's the first time he's reporting it. Um, yeah, sure. And if he had some involvement in creating the sketch he wouldn't be reporting it as if he just is talking about it for the first time 30 days later which leads me to believe that he had no you know no um hand in creating that sketch so if he was such a valuable witness um he'd have gotten involved you know, he would have gotten <laughs> involved they would have had him involved in making the sketch too um and then another thing so you're driving down the street you're looking for this black guy that just committed a crime how does he see all this? He's moving in a car. He's driving along. It's dark. How does he get everything, every detail that he has about Zodiac right down to the kind of shoes he was wearing? I find that highly <laughs> yeah. unbelievable. Highly unbelievable. I mean, if, yeah. I, if, if I glanced over and saw a guy real quick and said, okay, it looks like a 40-year-old guy with heavy set with glasses, 
but I'm looking for this black guy. I keep on driving. And I might remember later on, he's got down right to the kind of shoes that he's wearing. So I just find yeah. it highly, highly suspect what he said and the timing of his stuff. Sure. And he doesn't send that memo until a huge news story about the case runs in that morning, San Francisco. Hits uh, the mainstream magazine. News. And then all of a sudden he's, he's coming forward with what he saw. Personally, yeah. I don't believe it. Uh, yeah. A lot of people like to say, well, uh, Zelms, his widow said this and his widow said that. Okay, show me a report anywhere where Zelms said that he saw Zodiac, that he, you know, gave any kind of statement about what he witnessed. Um, when somebody produces that, uh, I'll be all yours. But For until sure. then, nobody has, um, you know, proof. It's all secondhand theory and information from unverified source, secondhand, mm -hmm. that Zelms saw anybody at all um, for, sure. for sure and then you know the one the comment they asked about him being in his 20s is that a problem they also asked about his shoe size um well people have pointed out in the picture it looks like max got small feet so he can't be the zodiac well you, you can see somebody's picture with their with feet that look small you don't know what shoe size they are so then they pointed out well his wife said they, he were seven and a half and you know, they point that out. So he, he can't be Zodiac because Zodiac wore a 10 and a half. Well, actually, she also said that at times he wore an eight and a half. Um, but she's also the same person that said Mac was 150 pounds when they got married. And his picture shows a 200 pound guy. So her memory of his physical features uh, sure. uh, is a little bit hazy because, you know, if she's thinking her 200 pound uh, hu husky husband was 150 pounds. She's yeah. off. So, uh, you know, in yeah. all fairness to her, I'm not going to rely 100% on her recollecting his shoe size after so many years being accurate. Sure, sure. Yeah. I mean, you would know better than me, but the story I heard was, you know, Tashi and Armstrong or whoever wanted to protect um, uh, Zelms and Falk because, you know, they didn't they didn't want Falk to get fired or, or whatever. So, yeah, but... <laughs> There's a lot, a lot of muddy water there. <laughs> it's, it's, so. all, it's, it's real hazy. And I, I'm a person that says, show me the money, show me the file, show me the report. If you want to prove me wrong with something, lay it out in black and white for me, not some secondhand hearsay, yeah. uh, you know, stuff that comes way after the fact, not somebody like officer Collins from Lake Berryessa saying, Oh, well, Cecilia said this, and I did this hand, this demonstration of how tall he was and blah, blah, blah he never put that in any report um you know so yep. why didn't you document all that stuff cecilia told told you supposedly at the time and in this most recent uh horan documentary all of a sudden now colin is saying that cecilia said he was in his 20s so i could use that to my benefit i could say oh yep. well now colin says that cecilia said the guy was in his 20s so that could be mac but i'm not doing that because i he didn't put that in the report at the time for sure i don't believe anything he says years after the fact i'm not giving it any credibility gotcha. yeah. you know whether that be height age anything i go by what was documented in police reports at the time not sure. what somebody said sure. 50 years later sort of like falk falk mm -hmm. never said anything about zodiac walking up the steps then all of a sudden this documentary 40 something years later he's got zodiac walking up steps to a certain address yeah. you know Majo, you know, I don't, I don't want to say anything negative about him. I don't know if he's got a mental disability or a, um, he's, he's had a rough go. He's got some, you know, he's obviously got some kind of issues. And in that documentary you see in 2007, he's all over the place, but as a 19 year old kid, I don't think that was the case. So, you know, and he documented what he saw, whether it's accurate or not to the best of his recollection, he documented what he saw as soon as he was able to talk. Um, so I go with that. I'm not going with something he changes his story on 50 years later. Uh, mm -hmm. I believe in what's documented early on is what is the best. You know, mm -hmm. I've talked to a lot of experts, you know, even come, coming down to physical descriptions. In your mind, you start replaying things and changing details and second guessing yourself. Mm -hmm. So if somebody sees something one day and gives you a description and three, four days later, they start replaying it in their mind. They start changing things, adjusting things, second guessing themselves, and you get differences. You know, a perfect example is James Owen. James Owen is at the scene of, of Lake Herman Road shooting hours after the, the murder, and he never mentions hearing a gunshot. But then in his second interview, three days after that, he suddenly remembers hearing a gunshot a quarter mile down the road. Now, me personally, mm -hmm. what I think is 
he started playing it over in his mind and imagined that and, and just stuck it in there. Because why wouldn't you remember that? Wouldn't that jump out to you if you're standing at the scene of a double murder I would 12 think hours so. later? Not, not three or four days later. So I think it's a perfect example of how somebody starts injecting things into their mind and, and second-guessing themselves. Yeah, and th that's the problem with Lake Herman Road. Is there, I think there's the most inconsistency with with uh, with that site than you know than than any other. Um, I, I'm just wondering your opinion on this thing that Tom came out with recently um, about Lindsey Robbins' son with the whole story about that. I, I went over this with Rich, but the whole story about the prints on the car and how like Lindsey supposedly told him like I, I tried to help uh, Stein. I tried to help up Stein and I touched the cab and like, and those were my prints, but don't, you know, don't tell anybody until, until we pass away. Did you, did you see this video from Tom? Yeah, I know people are, I did. are both ways on this. To me, I, you know, it sounds like BS to me. And again, yeah. at the end of the day, to me, it's second, third hand story, yeah. unverified, yeah. undocumented stuff. I don't really pay too much attention to it. For sure. Yeah. I just, uh, I I'm just wondering, cause you know, it's a, it's a recent, uh, I mean, it's a, it's an interesting story. I don't know how much, stock i would be able to uh put into it as, as you said um and palisetti as a matter of fact palisetti said in the documentary it, when he got to the scene and walked up to the car they were walking out of their house halfway to the cab when he stopped them and told them to turn around so mm -hmm. if, if his if his telling of that is right then they wouldn't have got to the cab they ever first. got to the cab yeah exactly yeah makes perfect sense um piggybacking off what you brought up earlier about uh, about barry essa because i i did have um, some stuff on that. So Collins, and I just like want to get your overall opinion on this. Collins came out in there and he said that like, he doesn't even think the Stein sketch is accurate at all. And in fact, that he thinks that the lurker, the, the Lake Berryessa lurker sketch is like the more accurate, like Zodiac sketch. Uh, that's kind of the, I don't know about you, but that's kind of the first time I ever heard like anyone in law enforcement say that I can understand how the Berryessa guys would take that angle. But like, what do you make of that? We don't even know that the guy that there's a sketch of it like Barrios was Zodiac. So right, exactly. Yeah, that's it, what it, I to me, to me, yeah. it's clearly not Zodiac. I mean, yeah. because the the girls that saw him, one of them I interviewed, she was the, uh, one Linda Jensen on the documentary. Yeah. Um, she and the others all said that this guy was in good physical shape. He was six foot, six foot two, um, in good shape physically. Um, nice looking a good, good looking was, guy yeah um and then we have the guy that attacked brian and cecilia he's got a belly hanging out of over shabbily his, dressed shabbily dressed belly hanging over his belt um the the dentist son i interviewed him too he said the guy he saw was physically looked out of place he was struggling to navigate the terrain it looked mm. like he was out of breath it looked mm. like he was having a hard time maneuvering through there when he saw um, saw him, so mm -hmm. I think if anything, that might be Zodiac because that I guy didn't. That guy doesn't seem like somebody you know that was physically fit. So I think the I, I think the sunbather guy at the end of the day is probably just some creeper that was out there creeping on girls and yeah, maybe didn't want to come forward because he didn't want to get involved or they might try and link him to the Zodiac crimes and he knew he right. wasn't right. Um, but you know I think it's just more of a, a a guy checking out some girls that are in bikinis walking around on the beach probably and probably too ashamed yeah. to come forward yeah 100 they said like nice looking uh hair combed of course when brian and cecilia see him it's like greasy hair coming out of the eye hole like that doesn't yeah. sound like a nice looking man with his with his hair combed it's it's totally yeah. inconsistent descriptions <laughs> and 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 the guy the girl saw didn't have any glasses on cecilia mm. said and it is documented in the police report cecilia said he was wearing glasses before he put the hood on. Before so, he put on the hood, one hundred percent. Yeah, that's and yeah. Uh, apparently the lurker was smoking butts, and they they wished uh, they collected his butts. But nineteen yeah. sixty nine, they... Ken Narlow right. said Ken Narlo said that he st stood there and next to the pile of cigarette butts, and he said he wished he could go back in a time machine and pick the yeah. cigarette butts up. Um, yeah. But you know, obviously they didn't know about DNA back then. Sure, it, it would have been nice to just um, uh, eliminate the the lurker altogether. But I thought that you know. I could, like I said, I could see the Berryessa guys like having that angle because, you know, it, especially the interview she gave at the new documentary, like it's, it's compelling. But again, when the descriptions are so inconsistent and then, like you said, the dentist, um, yeah, I got a bad feeling about, about the dentist guy. And didn't they have um, uh, the 22 rifles because they were rabbit hunting the dentist's son? So 
Yeah, of course, yeah. Zodiac is not going to attack those guys. He, he doesn't want to get shot back at, you know, if he can avoid yeah, it, you know. Exactly. So it's like it, it, it says it says a lot. Um, I don't know if you caught uh, just just jumping around a bit, and then we'll we'll we'll, we'll zoom in on on Mac in a bit. But uh, did you catch Rich's uh, article about what they found on the deep real estate? I know you guys covered it on this Zodiac speaking pod, but the recent developments on the deep real estate uh, article. I did. I, I thought that was interesting. Um, yeah. If they could identify somebody, you know, I'd still like to know that guy's name and yeah. maybe just dig into him a little bit to see who it was because sure. um, you could be a college student and be 30 years old. I mean, to, yeah. you know, I don't, I don't remember if Rich named an age of this guy, but um, yeah. you would assume it's somebody that's 18 to 22, but you know, look at Arthur Lee Allen. Wasn't he going to college in his thirties? Um, yeah, so, sure. so, so it could have still been Zodiac, even if it, you know, Zodiac related. Now I don't, but I don't yeah. personally buy into a Zodiac team theory or anything like that. I, but I always thought the, the timing of Manali dying and then that, that personal ad coming. That's what I was going to bring up. That's yeah. what I was just about. Now I, I, I kind of agree. Like I think I like, I highly think that, you know, the Zodiac killer doing the killings, it seems like a lone gunman in my amateur opinion. However, I would be open to like a, a letter writing team because it does seem that like there's way more inconsistency with the letters. It's just my personal theory. I'm not as deep as, you know, you or Void or any of those other guys. So maybe it's complete nonsense, but maybe it's synchronicity. But the Fred Manali, <laughs> the timing of Fred Manali is like dying. Like I, I could, you know, possibly see Manali, you know, involved in, in, in writing some, you know, letters or whatever, even if it's just copycat stuff, like, like, in other words, like we were just saying, maybe it is that random college student, but again, the timing of <laughs> Fred, it's like, what is it two days before? It's like a couple days before or something. So that's, uh, yeah. And it could be random, but it's wild, you know? And, and if, if you've never written, uh, read any of Fred Manali's writings, take a look at some of his letters. I mean, he's, yeah. He's using a lot of the same words Zodiac used. Um, right. He uses shall a lot. Yep. Um, he used the term satirical. Um, so you start looking at some of his writings and all of a sudden, uh, you know, it's interesting at least that um, they were on the same wavelength as far as words and word choices and stuff. Sure. Yeah. The, the, you know, similar vocabulary use. That's highly interesting to me. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely um, interested in that. E even going back to what you were saying about Riverside, you know, I feel like a lot of the Riverside Zodiac narrative is falling apart. However, we still need an explanation for the Riverside letter, the confession, you know what I mean? So like, it, it, in my opinion, I think Sherry's probably not Zodiac, but I could see him sending that confession letter and taking credit or, you know, being, being involved in some of those letters, not the Bates had to die letters. Um, of course, well, depending on where, which way you fall on that recent announcement, but, um, yeah. And then of course, you know, morals assessment of the desk poem being, you know, definitely being Zodiac, right? Like, I, I don't know. I think all of that is like conjecture, but like, again, you know, we, we know he reads the true detective magazine or whatever, so I could see him writing a letter, but it can't, but, Morph, correct me if I'm wrong. Did the confession letter come locally? So Zodiac would have at least have had to gone to Riverside to drop it off, if if I'm not mistaken. It was yeah, it was mailed or locally. Have a letter runner. <clears throat> yeah, it was mailed locally. Um, but the you know sort of going back, that was one of the reasons I always thought Zodiac had to have come from Riverside because of the fact. Well, a Sherwood Morrill thought it was his opinion that Zodiac wrote those letters, so that was part of it. Mm -hmm. But they sounded a lot like him. But then, right. you know, like he, like in the um, confession letter, he uses the term uh, squirm twitch and twitch, and squirm. Yeah. twitch and squirm. Yeah. And, you know, then Zodiac uses that same exact term. And I'm, I'm thinking to myself, okay, there's no way that's a coincidence. That has to be him. Well, then we find out that that it was, published in the article. was published in the detective magazine. So all of a sudden I'm thinking in my head, okay, this doesn't have to be him. Yeah, he, he for sure pulled very it from easily there. Yeah. could have read from this and yeah. said, this sounds like some master criminal down here in Riverside and very, I'm going to use his ammo. You know what I mean? And, and maybe after Lake Harmon road, that's when the, the magazine's published with the, the Riverside stuff. Mm -hmm. And then he decides later on, he's going to start writing letters like this Riverside killer. Mm -hmm. And, using some of the same terminology out of there. So mm -hmm. to me, that's mm -hmm. when I shifted to Zodiac doesn't have to be somebody that was in Riverside. They I just agree. have to have read this, this letter and sure enough, it was in that detective magazine. Yeah. Um, so to me, that was, you know, 
I, I stopped looking in Riverside because I don't know if Zodiac was there. I know he was in Vallejo. A hundred percent. You know, of course, we have Arthur Lee Allen at the Riverside race, so I, I could I could see him as a letter runner. You know, um, it, like I, I I think Arthur Lee Allen would have stuck out as a sore thumb in that library with a bunch of 19 year old college kids. So, you know, I'm the mechanic with grease on my fingers, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. But um, I, I could see him like being involved in like some sort of writing team, like we said with Manali or whoever, total speculation on my end, guys, you can kill me in the comments if you're not feeling it. Um, so that uh, just going along with Fred Manali and, and real quick, because uh, Voight just dropped, uh, you guys are both familiar with that, uh, that top secret uh, Santa Rosa uh, hitchhikers report from the, from the seventies. Um, I really never knew much about the Santa Rosa uh, hitchhiker murders until I read Zodiac and Graysmith kind of goes kind of hard on it in Zodiac, but he also names every other murder in the 1960s. So he's like, these are the four canonicals and these are the 500 Northern California, you know, unsolved cold cases. Um, do you have any interest in, in the Santa Rosa, uh, like hitchhiker slayings or do you, you know, relating to Mac or relating to the Zodiac, either one, do you, Think there's anything there or just a totally a totally different thing you know in the nearby town yeah i, th I think that's totally unrelated to zodiac um yeah. now the interesting thing you know when we're talking about manali he, he taught at santa rosa and mm -hmm. um uh, you know he's got um he's a suspect in at least one of those murders he and yeah, in one of the well, letters i posted he admitted he was a, a suspect um he was questioned by wendy police. Um, yeah. I, th yeah, I think it was Kim or Allen, Kim. if I remember yeah, correctly. Kim, yeah, Kim, yeah. Um, and years later I talked to his sister and she, at the time, I haven't talked to her in a long time, but she was willing to help by giving her DNA. If it would help at all, mm -hmm. I sort of put her in touch with the police. I don't know whatever happened. I don't know sure. if anything ever went further than that. Um, sure. but she was hoping if her brother was involved to, you know, have clear. him be responsible but if he wasn't she wanted to clear him too sure. but i don't know whatever i don't know whatever happened with that but you know back that report if you read through that report there's hundreds of names of different female victims of all sorts in that report yeah. um and there's and, oregon and washington yeah and additional... i i really think they were just sort of grasping at straws just it's yeah. interesting to go through some of those names and now some of those cases are solved Mm -hmm. um that are in that report um yep. it's interesting to see some of the, the names that they came up with uh i i think at the end of the day um you know none of them are zodiac victims i mean what do we know about zodiac 100 percent. you know he attacks unsuspecting people in cars or in lone areas where they're alone yeah. he you know has a gun in in each time and he uses yeah. the knife of Barryessa, but he at least has a gun with him um yeah. and then he gets out he 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 doesn't abduct anybody yeah in you and know, out the stein the stein case is the most different obviously from them but typically it's unsuspecting couples in secluded areas is zodiac's yeah. mo and then he gets in and gets out there's mm -hmm. never a confirmed instance of zodiac kidnapping somebody taking them away um there's no evidence that kathleen johns was a zodiac victim um I mean, she saw a poster on the wall and said, oh, that's the guy yeah. that abducted me. Beyond yeah. that, there's no um, evidence that, that says, and there, and if we look at all of his confirmed crimes, there's no evidence of him ever taking anybody. There's no evidence of him ever sexually assaulting anybody, raping yeah. them. So, you know, yeah. people throw these dumb theories out that the Golden State Killer and Zodiac are one and the same. They're totally different yes. people. Um, yes. But I, I think... There were so many people operating in California that were bad at that same time that yep. it was easy to, for them to sort of pollute each other's pools and and get linked together. And and Zodiac was named for all kinds of crimes. Yeah. And he probably liked the attention. He probably liked being connected to some of them, you know, thinking that he was this uh, criminal genius. In reality, I think he he probably committed the crimes that we know that he committed. And I don't think there's many more. Yeah, I, I agree. I think he loved the attention and it it also helped him because, oh, if they're crediting me for stuff nowhere near my area of activity that I had nothing to do with, they'll be totally lost on that lead as opposing to, you know, deep diving the, uh, you know, the four canonicals and maybe finding some, you know, evidence that would that would stick him. Um, exactly. Going on to what you were just saying about Zodiac's MO. So my my series, uh, The Zodiac Files, we've been deep diving the four uh, pre-canonical uh, you know, 
unconfirmed Zodiac attacks. Um, I just wanted to like get your overall opinion of on those Ray Davis up to Gaviota Beach 63. Um, I'm just wondering, would you, I know Mac Duff would be young because these are pre 68. Would you have Mac in play for any of those, uh, those pre Z crimes, uh, like specifically Gaviota 63? No, no. As a matter of fact, I, um, you know, I had went as far, uh, to, to try and, uh, see if he could have been down there for like summer break uh, mm -hmm. graduation i think he i think i remember mac graduated on the day of the murders down there so i, I don't think that was him i don't think there's zodiac crimes to begin with down there but I, yeah. if mac was zodiac i don't think he would be involved in any of them obviously mm -hmm. um it'd be very much a stretch to think that Absolutely. Um, yeah, of course, that's that's, you know, your your suspect that you champion. So I just wondered your general thoughts. So so you don't have uh, anything pre 68 as Zodiac, at least these known ones, Ray Davis, because for me, um, Dominguez Edwards, like it is, it seems to be like a spitting image of Barry Essa. There's just so many parallels, not, not saying it's the same killer, but like, you know, if we're going on what we were just saying before about Zodiac reading True Detective and, re you know, he's obviously conscious of california cold cases as it were um it seems if it was not the same killer like another um riverside situation that he's at least you know conscious of the case and, and what happened because the whole um you know binding the clothesline bindings and stuff like that it just seems to be a lot of parallel between um um dominguez edwards and, and Berryessa. It's, it's definitely um an interesting case from that standpoint in that there is similarity um mm -hmm. You know, one of the rumors that was totally unverified, is, it's just that a rumor is that there was a wing walker track found at the crime scene. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, if you came forward and said, okay, ballistics confirmed that the same gun there was used in another Zodiac crime or something like that. If there's physical evidence that linked the case and police said, you know, unquestionably this, this was Zodiac, mm -hmm. then I would have a hard time thinking that Mac could, could have done any of those. Cause I think he was just too young and I don't see him. There's no links to him in Southern California whatsoever. Um, so I'd have to reevaluate that. But, you know, again, at the end of the day, we don't have any confirmation that any of those crimes are Zodiac. They're just crimes sure. that have similar MO. So until we get physical evidence or, uh, you know, some documentation saying that these crimes are linked to Zodiac, to me, it's just an interesting case with, with similarities to Zodiac. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's solid ground. Um, you know, I'm just, I've been deep diving uh, 63 cause that's my part four, which is coming out soon. And um, I'm just strictly going off of that press release of what Webster and Carpenter and Baker joins the case much later, but their big thing that they're all pushing in those documents is that there's, there's unreleased, you know, you just alluded to it. There's unreleased evidence at Domingos Edwards, which we have not publicly announced. I think, I think JB Averett knows what it is. He's he said he's seen the files, but he he hasn't told us on the on the forum. So I've tried to get JB on the show, on the show, but um that's the big thing. It's the unreleased evidence, and as you said, if it's the Wing Walker footprints or maybe more, you know, I'm I'm always wondering what that is, like the, like the rest of us are. So yeah, but th to me, my thinking is, if the case was related, we'd know about it. They, it would be an official Zodiac crime. It would be sure. Agreed. You know, they'd link it, they they investigate it, cross-investigate it together with the Zodiac crimes, yet we don't see any evidence of that. So um, I don't want to speak too bad. Well, Armstrong yeah. reached out to them. Okay. Arms, yeah. So there was a little bit. I don't think it, you know, they, they reached out and talked. I don't, I wouldn't yeah. be able to say that like more came, you know, because they did that with uh, the Swindles and, and Santa Barbara, as, as you just said, they tested and the Bates. They did it with, with Bates test. They, they cross checked not, it. Not these much agencies. Up, no, these agencies mm. reach out in different crimes, especially if they have similar MO and they look mm. to see if there's something there. You know, for example, D'Angelo was arrested. They're looking all over California for any crime, even remotely resembling him reaching out to different jurisdictions yeah. to see it's, it's common practice to do that. But at the end yeah. of the day, and the Santa Barbara ran stacker, you yeah, know, if they, Santa Barbara look, said, uh, we have this physical evidence here and it could link to the Zodiac case, they'd link the cases and work them together and that would give I them agree. a strong lead for investigation. So to me, yeah. it's just an interesting similarity. But until I see something in black and white, an official release or something by police that say, hey, we have one more official Zodiac crime, 
anything like that, I'm I'm not, you know, I'm sort of on the fence on that. I don't think there's any any proof of anything for those early crimes being connected to Zodiac. Now, one thing you can maybe answer me, because um, I don't know the answer to this, was the Ray Davis crime, was that mentioned in any detective magazines that you know of? That's a great question. I, I, I don't know the answer to that, unfortunately. That was my episode two, so it's like it's been a little while since I've been on Ray Davis. Um, since since you asked, this guy just threw on here. I do not think Mac could be Zodiac because I'm 100% sure that the Ray Davis murder is so similar to Stein's that it was by Zodiac and it cannot be Mac too young. I mean, I mean, here's my thing. Like, I see where he's coming from and I, I do lean towards a high percentage to, to um, Davis being Zodiac. But here's my thing. Like, if Mac is doing these canonicals, I really don't care how how young Mac is. I could see, you know, if Morph ever found anything putting him at Santa Barbara, I could still see a young Zodiac doing, uh, six, you know, Domingos Edwards because it strikes me as a younger, you know, un, you know, conditioned, you know, killer. Um, I, I don't know about um, Davis being in uh, True Detective magazine, but one report from Domingos Edwards, and this might be speculation because I, I don't know how they would confirm this. Uh, other than the bruises on Bobby's knuckles, is that they think that there was like a physical altercation between them, and they found these blood drops in in the in the creek that led them to think. There's this one article that says that they thought that the killer of Domingos Edwards like got wounded and injured, possibly stunned during Gavita '63, and then he left the scene with like a like an injury, like a bloody nose or something like that, um, from these blood drops in the creek. I'm far from like a true crime expert on the level of, you know, you and Richard Voigt, those guys, but I don't know how they would determine that those blood drops in the Creek would be the killers as opposed, as opposed to Linda and Bobby who got shot in that exact location. You know, that's just like, yeah. I can see where they're going, but I'm like, how do you differentiate, especially back then, if you haven't tested all the blood to see if it comes from three, three different people, you know, yeah. unless they were able to determine a blood type and that it wasn't, bobby or linda's blood type that you know, that, that would do it sure yeah that would do yeah. it for sure but um, again at the end of the day uh i'm sort of skeptical that any of those ones are zodiac and and i am again going back to looking exclusively at the known zodiac crimes yep and then if the, if the zodiac case is ever solved and they determine 100 who zodiac was they'll be able to go back and say okay was he ever in southern california for these other ones Hundred percent, and, and if he can't be placed there, then he, they're probably not Zodiac crimes. Yeah, a hundred percent. My whole thing is because we've had such dead ends. You kind of brought it up at the beginning of the show, the DNA uh, mystery, and the you know the fingerprints. They always come back to that. There's never been anything solid from the letters or the four canonicals. So I was like, let me start deep diving these other similar tangential cases just to see if something was missed some link that you know as you said a link that will connect them you know the pre-canonicals to the canonicals or that connect them to a suspect who would be a good uh a good location for the bay area as as, as you were saying as you found with mac um i believe morph brought this up earlier there was another murder of a couple in 67 alameda county similar to mo morph looked into it but apparently the evidence for that case was compromised yeah, if you have anything on that morph definitely send it to me i'm, I'm definitely uh, interested in that in that case yeah and you can you can probably i believe there's a thread on tom's site it's um mm -hmm. rodriguez molina is the name of the two. Oh, victims. that's okay i do know that one yes yeah. I, yeah. I do that yeah butterfield had yeah. that on on his on his page yeah. um I, we brought it up earlier what is more well we didn't specifically this but we brought up chester what is morse view on chester klingle as a suspect i think morse got his own suspect <laughs> yeah i uh, well I, I i think it's interesting that the klingle thing is interesting nonetheless because my thinking is, what do we know about Zodiac? Zodiac was paranoid about sending information about cameras because he or film or whatever because he thought they would trace back mm -hmm. to him. So he had some some knowledge of that and maybe got it out of these detective magazines. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But is he really going to go ahead and mail copies of P.O. box keys, which you know are going to be able to be traced back to somebody? Um because they've got key numbers on them, you know, the right. post office, they have records of those. I mean, the, a, anyone with common sense would think I'm not going to send copies of these if they're mine so they can trace them back to me. I think if anything, Zodiac either found those keys, had access to them, had a beef with him and 
wanted yeah. the police to go chasing him down I and agree. knew that they would be linked back to him and yep. sort of screw with him sent those keys you know i think it's somebody with a beef um i don't think yeah. it, chester klingle was zodiac um and I, I think you know it'd be pretty dumb to send copies of your own keys that could be traced back i mean after zodiac supposedly proclaimed himself a genius i'm putting cement uh, airplane cement on my fingers i'm not leaving prints i'm leaving them fake clues like he really made himself you know he talked himself up a lot so as more for saying i totally agree there's no way he's going to oversight those keys being traced back. And, but I do think as uh, Morph just stated that it could be Zodiac framing Klingle because, you know, I don't think that Alan is the Zodiac. Basically nobody in our community does, but I do think there could be like a lot of heat being put on him. So I think Zodiac does not mind framing people at all. So like the Chester thing, possibly Alan, you know, other, other, you know, Manali, Aunt, I think there's these other names that kind of like get thrown into the mix. And I think Zodiac's fine with that. The more, the more people who get, you know, named and involved and he knows it's likely not going to get traced back to him. Yeah. Okay, fine. He's just throwing more names in the pot that are never. The only interesting thing to me that's in, uh, interesting about Chester is is just his uh, profession, the, the, the Merchant Marine and then the tar box thing. So I, I wonder if Zodiac could have known, uh, known him from his profession, as you said, and and scoop those keys from him but uh yeah I love and I, I i looked um i looked into chester Klingle a little bit just to see what ties if any he had to vallejo and he actually bought property there but it wasn't until i think in the 2000s or the 1990s it was well after the zodiac crime. Right, I couldn't, yeah, after, find, yeah. couldn't find any connection to him to vallejo before that so mm -hmm. you know it's an interesting thing to to look at but at the end of the day i personally think it was somebody messing with him trying to get the police giving yeah. him a hard time and then getting some kicks out of that. The one thing, yeah. you know, it's interesting though, um, DNA use in this country for solving crimes wasn't really public knowledge until the early 1990s, like 1991 and after. Mm -hmm. um, so the one thing Zodiac probably didn't know, even if he was up on the latest news, I don't even think he would have known this. I think at that time of that 1990 Eureka card and any time before that, he'd know about Prince, obviously, and he'd protect mm. leaving Prince, but he wouldn't know about DNA. So I'm, I'm a big supporter of them testing any and all DNA samples from any envelopes that they have sure. in this case um, to see if they can link. And whether the, the letters are legit or they're, they're not, there's somebody playing a joke, they need to identify as many of these people as they can. Yeah. and rule them out one at a time um, because even if their Eureka card or any other thing that was mailed is fake, at least check into it, identify the people and cross them off the list. Um, they should be doing that at this stage. Um, if they're not, you know, obviously a couple of years ago, there was this whole DNA fiasco that was, you know, as Tom put it, it linked back to somebody that couldn't possibly be Zodiac, which, yeah, what yeah. does that mean? I don't even know what that means, but that drove me um, insane. Yeah. And, and I don't know, if Tom just didn't know all the details, maybe they weren't explained to him properly, whatever it was. That's it's supposed the to be a with... female or a non-white. Something. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, and an that's animal. The thing. But, but if that's the case, even if that's the case, um, it's a starting point. If somebody it, it licked the back of an envelope that was sealed and contained a Zodiac letter, whether that person was a kid an African-American, whoever it was, an, an associate it, that knew him it's in a person. starting point to go to them and say, OK, you, let's look at everybody in your circle, everybody you worked with, everybody that was in your home, whatever. Um, so to me, that's not enough of an explanation. There's something yeah. missing there in that that explanation, because um, it would be at least a place to say, how did your DNA get on the back of this envelope? Now, I think I, I think Tom tried to put the caveat out there that people were into reusing stamps and envelopes and resealing them on previously sent stuff. So I think he was hinting that maybe Zodiac used a secondhand stamp or a secondhand letter or something like that. I don't know. But the only thing I know for sure is that Zodiac didn't know about DNA in 1969 through 1974. Yeah. So yeah. he wouldn't take precautions not to leave DNA. 
he'd take precautions not leave fingerprints but anybody that says that he had his friends lick the stamps because he was worried they'd trace it back to his dna or something like that it's yeah. not possible they didn't know about dna back then so the whole stamp looking thing is always to me that's just a cop out for my suspect's dna isn't there so i've got to come up with another reason why he work around be, he can still be <laughs> zodiac even though it's not his dna on there yeah 100 percent. so that being said, uh, we alluded to it earlier. I want to get your opinion of what Riverside came out with with those Bates had to die letters because they said that the troubled youth sent those three Bates had to die letters and that they were able to link it, I think, supposedly with the with the saliva. But didn't didn't Tom cast doubt on that? Didn't he say that they basically just took the guy's word for it? Uh, I'm just wondering what yeah. what your angle is on that one. I, you know, I hate to comment on it because I, it's, again, yeah. anything that's secondhand information that I don't yeah. know firsthand, I have a hard time commenting on it because I feel sure. like something could sure. be missing in the conversation. Sure. If somebody told me something specifically firsthand and I was relaying it to somebody like yourself or whatever, I, mm -hmm. I have a much easier time doing that. Um, sure. I, I do know the whole, oh. You know, the whole fiasco with the uh, the DNA there in that Bates case, it just further instills in me why it's important to focus on the known Zodiac crimes and also to focus on the confirmed evidence and not spend too much time on things that may or may not be Zodiac connected. And and while handwriting is important, it's a, it's a piece of the puzzle. It's the investigating, looking at the letters, handwriting analysis that's important but it's not as important as dna or fingerprints um mm -hmm. at the end of the day it's not pure science sure would not concrete. Or, or anybody yeah. else's opinion is not science it's yeah. an it's an opinion formulated on their experience and their training but it's not science mm -hmm. so at the end of the day i think this Great. case is really going to come down to fingerprints and dna yeah absolutely i i agree a hundred percent um Let's get back to the wing walkers at Berryessa. So I know that uh, later on in the timeline, if I'm not mistaken, Mac becomes a prison guard or some some similar uh, career line to that. That made sense to me because I know the wing walkers were distributed to Army, Navy, and federal, uh, you know, uh, organizations like you know prison guards and such. But that's that's later on, right? Was that uh, like? 71 or 74 or whatever and Berryessa is 69 so do you just see like mac as like a uh you know like one of those like army navy store type of guys like a, a military enthusiast that could have could have purchased the wing walkers or whatever well that that's the thing with those wing walkers are not really as exciting a clue as a lot of people like to make them yeah, out to be yeah. you know it's i know they like, produce like hundreds of thousands right yeah so. they sold them at surplus stores now that being said mac's dad was a veteran um mm -hmm. so i'm sure he had access to go to a commissary or whatever and, and buy yeah, those PX. shoes there but yeah. um at the end of the day i just i don't know that there's enough there to to really how important that wing walker clue actually is because it's just you know sure. if, it, it was, if it was only issued specifically to x amount of people in mm -hmm. one area during one six month period or something like that that would be pretty compelling but it'd be to way see easier were, to see yeah. that they were just available to almost anybody it it, it, yeah. it sort of weakens that as a clue in my mind sure yeah i mean i i like the wing walker but i'm kind of you know i could take it or leave it um but <laughs> one thing that always sticks out to me is uh i think this is like one of the strangest things in the you know in the zodiac case now this is the zodiac case we're talking about but when he makes up the escaped prisoner from uh montana uh, story at berryessa it strikes me as as totally random so i'm always interested in anyone that that has a suspect that can that can connect to that because like yeah, i think you stated it on the pod it's very uh, unusual that a northern californian resident at that time would be familiar with escaped prisoners from montana or maybe any any kind of crime headline from montana but you actually put together a, a, a connection between uh max family and montana that he may have uh he may have been conscious about um events uh, occurring there and, and that may be the reference for the the masked killer at berryessa making this reference is that correct i mean mac had family in deer lodge uh back in montana and his cousin 
was dying in Deer Lodge at that time. She was ill. Um, so she was dying. So, you know, just the theory, I don't have any evidence of this, but I could see his parents communicating back home with the family and saying, oh, so-and-so is really sick. She's up in Deer Lodge right now and she's not going to make it. And then they sort of just relay this information to Mac and it just pops into his head at Lake Berryessa. Because what's important in that case is that Deer Lodge story about escaped prisoners didn't run in any California newspapers. Right. So how go. would, and I know some people have argued back and forth, well, you really said Colorado. I, I use Occam's razor here. Mm -hmm. There were really escaped prisoners at, out of Deer Lodge and out of Colorado at that time. So to me, sure. Occam's razor said the most logical thing is he referenced that for some reason because he knew somehow about escaped prisoners in Deer Lodge. I agree. Um, because there happened to be escape prisoners in your lodge. It just didn't run in any California. So to me, that screams to somebody that's getting information from back in your lodge somehow. Yep. And when you have somebody with a family connection and a dying member of, of a family there in your lodge, I could see a conversation coming up. And, oh, by the way, Mac, you should have heard this story there. They're looking for this escape prisoner. And I could just see him formulating this at Lake Berryessa to use as his part of his cover story there at Lake Berryessa. These little things that nobody's going to really link to anybody right? because I'm only doing it now 50 years later because I have the, I'm able to find all this stuff out and put it together. But at the time, right. How would they have, how would they have ever connected Mac to, to you know, to um, Deer Lodge, Montana? It was yeah. just some stray piece of information. So off that um, one little statement, it's like it, one it, sentence. It, in a conversation. Exactly. But, but we know for sure, who, whatever the reason he chose to make that statement, it wasn't something that just anybody in California would know about because it wasn't in the newspapers. Right. And like you said, life event stressor, you know, like it's just, it's just one little comment he made, but it hints back to like, I, you know, I, I thought that was a great job of you guys uh, linking that up. Um, mm. See, I don't know that this is Morph's wheelhouse, but if there are other, if there are suspects, why hasn't law enforcement used genetic genealogy as they did in GSK and Kohlberger? I mean, well, that it, goes ping pongs around a lot. <laughs> well, it, it, the, the first thing is number one, the the DNA from GSK and um, Koberger was preserved. They knew a lot more about DNA and how to preserve it, and that they needed to preserve it. Things were preserved that they weren't. They didn't do back in 1969. We see pictures of Toski and and uh, Armstrong holding Paul Stein's shirt with like bare hands. Yeah, and, by and hands. And, I mean, they just, ropes, it's all they over just the didn't know about that stuff. They didn't know that they needed to take care of it. So number one, they didn't know how to preserve it. They didn't know that it had to be refrigerated right. and whatnot. So right. you just Temperature. leave something sitting up on a shelf. You leave something up on a shelf for 40 years and then you, you hope it's going to be usable DNA on it. That's not always the case. Um, so that's part of it. But then also you look at somebody like GSK you know, he left semen inside of victims. That's a whole different set of kind of DNA. We're not talking about a few cells on an envelope seal. We're talking about right. a rich source of DNA that's plentiful that they can use to really make a profile with. Um, so I think you have to be careful when you're comparing like Zodiac possible DNA with GSK's DNA because it's coming from two sources. He left a lot of it at different Ooh. crime scenes. They had a plethora of of DNA and you know at the at the where they actually used GSK's DNA sample to, to make the uh, profile out of was from a rape kit from one of the murder victims. Um, the medical examiner at their time had a habit of making duplicate uh, slides. He'd basically take a sample, put it in a slide, and then put it into evidence and store it there. And so they had this perfectly preserved extra copy that he made from one of the victims um, that was properly stored right from the beginning. So they were able to use that to make the profile that ultimately led to, to GSK. Um, so it's not apples. It, it's, you got to make sure you're comparing apples and oranges just because there may be a DNA in the Zodiac case doesn't mean that it's DNA uh, enough to make a profile with. Um, it might be, could be enough to, to maybe rule somebody out if you had their DNA sample and you could compare it side by side, but it might not be enough to do genealogy um, to lead back to a suspect. I think and I hope that in the Zodiac case right now, they're, that's what they're trying to do. I, I hope they're trying to just do genealogy on something that leads back um, to whoever it was. Um, 
and we'll talk about this on the I, I mentioned I'm gonna have a episode coming up on uh, Zodiac speaking with a DNA expert. Hopefully this is some of the stuff we talk about. Um, but now, for example, they can pull DNA and build a profile from hairs with no root. Imagine that. I mean, you can get a hair with no root on it and get a DNA profile from that. That's a, that's amazing. So if there's any hairs in the Zodiac case that 10 years ago you couldn't do anything with, you know, that, that DNA, that hair that was under that stamp that, that ruled out Arthur Lee Allen, yep. that was enough to rule somebody in or out maybe, but that was it. There was nothing else they could do with it. Right. That same hair, they could build a profile. Now, we don't know if that was ultimately Zodiac. That could have been a mail carrier or whoever because it was on the outside of the envelope under a stamp. It could have just got stuck right. on there accidentally. But now that something they couldn't do five, ten years ago, they can tell who that hair belongs to. Um, so they should be doing that in the Zodiac case. They should be trying to identify any yep. and all DNA sources and who they belong to. I agree. Um since you brought that up, uh, first of all, Morph is in the GSK documentary on uh, on Tubi, so go check that out, guys. Uh, it, was a, it was a good one. Um, what was this story? I think it was on Citizens Detective. You guys recounted it that there was something dirty included with was it the Halloween card? And then I, I don't know if it was a rumor, but you guys brought up it might be a, it might be a used condom. You heard? Well, that that's something that actually originated on Tom's forum. Okay. And I don't know that to be true at all. That was mm. something I heard secondhand. Again, yeah. you know how I feel about secondhand yeah. information. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I just, <laughs> just a hearsay rumor. You know, one of the things that was interesting was Tom mentioned that he had gotten a a duplicate card of the Halloween card that one of the investigators had given him, and it had it was like an identical duplicate, and inside were these Valentine stickers. Mm -hmm. um, this is again, this is all secondhand as per Tom. I can't confirm any of this, mm -hmm. but he was of the opinion that Zodiac may have actually included Valentine stickers in that Halloween card. Now, mm -hmm. to most people, they'd say, Well, why would he include Valentine's stickers in a Halloween card? Well, Mac was born on Valentine's Day, so to me, all of a sudden, that's an interesting thing. But at the end of the day, it's, it's secondhand, unverified information. I was going to ask you about that offline because I'd heard that one too, but I didn't know how how far it went. But yeah, definitely. I mean, if that lined up, yeah, that's definitely uh, interesting for sure. Um, I'm, yeah, this guy's asking you about GSK. I'm just going to keep going about, on Zodiac, to be honest. Um, let's just, for my audience, I'm getting this pretty much my last question, but I have a couple follow-ups. Let's... Uh, just for my audience, reiterate that story of the the, the poisoning of the teacher. Uh, you mentioned it earlier. Uh, was it was it arsenic in the in the Seven Up can? Um, because I think that's the craziest thing you guys ever covered on Zodiac speaking. <laughs> yeah. So it was, um, and I, I'm ter I'm getting when you turn fifty years old, you start little things start Sorry. slipping in your mind. So <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to remember. Uh, Dan, uh, his name was Daniel. I can't remember his uh, last name off the top of my head do you remember what his last name was the teacher uh rich rich if you're still in the chat daniel uh, i know rich uh, it. i i can't remember his last name but um anyhow basically he had been getting threatening taunting letters from somebody claiming to be zodiac and then the one day he took a sip out of the soda in his fridge and it was some something was off with it and he it's felt weird yeah he felt something was somebody did something to his drink so he called the police and sure enough they tested it and it was arsenic daniel williams there we go look at that richard's like a he's got a mind like a steel trap he doesn't that's, forget a, that's like that's like the phone a friend on uh the <laughs> exactly yeah so, <laughs> get a line, Richard. <laughs> yeah so it, it, daniel williams so what's interesting and again there's there's nothing at all that that verifies confirms that that um zodiac was responsible for that but it's somebody claiming to be Zodiac tried to kill this guy. So Broke we know at the very least, the drink, right? it, it's, a, so. it's a kill. It's, a, it's someone that's attempting to murder somebody. So it, at the very least, you know, and that sort of ties to, you know, I don't know that this teacher knew him. Um, uh, I don't know that he knew Mac, that they knew each other at all. I can tell you they're the same age. Um, so, you know, just an interesting thing I noticed was they were the same age. So could yeah, they have known yeah, each yeah. other? I have no idea. But, you know, it, it goes back to Mac, supposedly, according to his wife, and she didn't know the name of the place, was working at a hardware store in Contra Costa County at that time. Mm -hmm. And I think the hardware store back then was a place you could probably get arsenic. 
um, rat poison or, or whatever um, for pest control, whatever it was for. So could he have had a beef with this guy over something? And, you know, he's working on Harbor Street. He's got access to, to that. I don't know. It's It's speculation at best, but at the very least, somebody tried to murder this guy so yeah um yeah. That, it, that goes beyond just a simple hoax that that goes behind somebody yeah. just let me play along and, and and mess around and you know play these jokes on somebody for attention you know another interesting case not really related to that was the threat on the um the sports reporter ed salmina um do you remember that one uh it's not the thing with the with the baseball tickets, right? It's it, something with, else. No, no, no. It's something else with the, with baseball. Okay. Um, but okay. go back and read on Rich's site. He's got a, a write up yeah. on El, El Selmina. He was a sports reporter, um, and he coached uh, an amateur baseball team, um, and he got a threatening letter from someone claiming to be Zodiac that said, "Don't over the next whatever dates or so many weeks, do not leave your house or you'll be killed." Um, and they were they coincided with baseball games um, wow. uh, that that he was coaching. Well, uh, some of these games, some by these teams that he was p- coaching, um, one of the teams I think he was playing was Vacaville. Vacaville, I, I can't remember if it was Vacaville Prison Guard Team or whatever. Hmm. Um, which was interesting because you know they played these games right at um, in their Vacaville Prison in a baseball field they had there, and yep. you know maybe Mac was rooting for the home team and didn't want, um, you sure. know, he didn't like the idea of, uh, of them, of him coaching this team. That's going to beat his team. I, I don't know. It's just yeah. an interesting, yeah, yeah. interesting like tidbit. It. It's just another possible connection. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's super interesting. Uh, I like it. Um, another one, you guys swayed me over, uh, just real quick on when you guys covered it on Zodiac speaking was, uh, was the gay man at, uh, hate ashbury or whatever uh, neighborhood that was where they wrote like the satanic thing and it was uh, this is the, was it salem salem was it? Yeah. yeah um yeah that, you know i know a lot of people kind of just write that one off and overlook it but the way you guys covered it you know i kind of I, I don't think like it's highly likely zodiac but i i could have that one in play you know what i mean it seems random and crazy enough for it to be zodiac you know um yeah i mean it's at least in the right vicinity it's in you know, that area where we should be, it's not something like you get, you go all the way to something happening in Albany, New York. You got to say, well, is this Zodiac or is this a copycat? You know, yeah. this is right there in San Francisco. I personally don't think that was Zodiac, but you know, who, who knows? Yeah. Which, which neighborhood was it? it was the Castro or Haight Ashbury? Was it one of them, right? Do you remember yeah. It was, it was, it was one of those areas right there in the heart of San Francisco. And at least yeah. that's in, you know the the wheelhouse area of, of Zodiac. We sure. know he's mailing letters from there all the time. So, yeah, Ground Zero, absolutely. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that one or if you've heard Zodiac speaking, but but weigh in on that in the chat. That's basically all I got for you, Morph. Uh, my final follow up. I'm just wondering, did you ever? This is something I always deep dive into. You know the the literary references of the Zodiac. He's always got The Exorcist. He's always got movies. You know Badlands. If you believe all that other stuff, of course Gilbert and Sullivan, The Mikado. He he finally ends on that last kind of final haiku poem that he he goes out on. Um, did you ever find any relationship to Mac to comic books or you know of course the Wheel of Death um, or like the Mikado or you know any any of that Gilbert and Sullivan kind of production stuff. Well, that that was that was a smoking gun that I hoped I would find. I would hope I would find some reference to the Mikado to mm-hmm. Gilbert and Sullivan. I never did. I know he sure. did read comic books. He did read the detective type magazines. Mm-hmm. One of his friends uh, told me that. Um, mm-hmm. You know, so the smoking gun to me, if you if you found somebody that had like with Mac, if he had a Gilbert and Sullivan record collection or something, that would be just over the top for me. But. I'm I'm trying to focus on on other things like getting more handwriting of his. Sure. Um, sure. You know, Zodiac. Had a, yeah, yeah. Anything like that. I mean, Zodiac had some very specific handwriting, especially like with his three stroke K, his mm-hmm. candy cane F. There's certain. Yeah, yeah. There's certain things where if you see them, you know, I'm not a handwriting expert, but there's certain things if I see them, they look like Zodiac. Or they don't, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, and unfortunately, I, I haven't been able to get my hands on a lot of Max writing. The more I could get my hands on, the, the better. Um, 
I want to get more hands on, on that. So that's one thing I'm really pushing for is to get more writing or audio, video, more photos, anything from yeah. that time frame of him, which is why I've been reaching out to people and offering rewards for anyone that can serve up any kind of information that uh, can be verified to be true stuff from, from Mac. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm always interested in it just because there's like, so many references to films and uh, books, you know, the most dangerous game, um, possibly even, you know, Charlie Chan at Treasure Island. Um, the, what else is there? The um, uh, that the museum piece episode of um, Hitch, it was at Hitchcock. Uh, so that, you know, it seems like he gave us so much of, of his interest is it's always like, can we link any of this stuff up to uh, anybody, which is always the, the, the most difficult part to do, as, as you know, more because you've deep dived it. Um, that's basically all I got for Morph, guys. If you have any like good questions for him, now's the time. Good questions, not random stuff. I mean, there's a, a lot of uh, a lot of Mac is not the Zodiacs in here, guys. It's, it's not really what we're looking for. Uh, but, <laughs> you know, there's for whatever reason that the trolls have a field day with Mac. I don't know what it is. They've never pushed back <laughs> a suspect more, but I, yeah. I do get a kick out of it. I, I do feel sorry for some people that don't have uh, enough stuff to do in their life that they hang out in a sure. thread of someone they feel is a bad suspect and continually make posts there, spending hours Collect, of their life. Collecting posting. treasure trolls from Morph <laughs> is pretty much what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> Morph, uh, Morph's actually done. Um, oh, a final point. Um, Max, uh, like, Masonic connection, because he's a, he, he, you found out he was an, an initiate. Um, I find that interesting just because Freemasonry is a lot of, a lot of symbolism, a lot, you know, maybe even some coding. So, um, yeah, he, could, he was, I could see that fitting. He was certainly a Freemason. He was involved in the Freemasons. Um, I, the Freemason thing is interesting, but I haven't really explored that. It's just too deep a rabbit hole for me. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. but he was definitely 100% a Freemason. Yeah. I'm not saying an Illuminati conspiracy. I'm simply saying from a perspective yeah. of there's a lot of, uh, you know, the symbolism and a lot of, you know, just, codes. Just, they use a lot of codes and stuff. Yes. And, and, yes. and a lot of, you know, way before I found Mac, people were talking about a Masonic connection. So yeah. maybe there's yeah. one for Zodiac. I just haven't really explored that avenue uh, yeah. too much. Uh, of course, they like to relate a Masonic connection into every unsolved mystery, but it is just yeah. happens to be interesting that your, your suspect was was in fact an initiate um yep i think, think that's all we got for for morph this episode appreciate your time very much sir uh go subscribe to citizen detective on youtube go check out zodiac speaking everywhere uh let them know where to find you more for any anything else that you uh, yeah you can find me on find me on twitter at true crime guy um and i host a bunch of different true crime podcast criminology uh, you mentioned citizen detective the murder of my family missing persons i do a lot of different uh work with different podcast um abjack.com is that is that the website abjack now? yeah abjackentertainment.com abjackentertainment.com follow morph at true crime guy greatly appreciate there there was a, another question here about why you weren't in the recent documentary morph i'm, I'm going to skip it I, I don't think you care to comment <laughs> well i mean I'll, I'll comment quick enough um uh, well number one i wasn't asked but i you know i I get asked periodically for to participate in different things. And I first want to know what they're about and what they're going to end with, because, you know, in some of the other shows I've been involved with, you don't really know what you're getting into until you see it on TV. And then you're like, wait a minute, I didn't know this was going to be the way this was supposed to turn out. Yeah, it gets so edited now, a certain way. <laughs> yeah. So now I'm, I ask questions and I, if I don't agree with something and I'll tell them right up front, you know, I, I think your theories hogwash uh, you know i don't think they really saw that on twitter <laughs> yeah they really don't want uh somebody coming on that's going to shoot down their their theory so um yeah. you know some some people choose to go on these shows regardless you know if it's yeah. if it pays anything at all they'll go uh yeah. um if they just want to up their profile they'll go on just for the sake of going on i, I sort of pick and choose a little bit of stuff um you know i want to at least know what it's about what it's going to look like when it comes out Sure, sure. Yeah, the question was whether or not you were invited. I mean, they did have Butterfield in that in that last one pushing back. So for yeah, what? Well, I'm I'm glad to see there's some pushback because I personally believe the theory is a hogwash. But that's a, a conversation for another day. Yeah, yeah you, you weren't feeling that. Um, one of my favorite morph stories of all time is when I was listening to uh, Zodiac A to B uh, Butterfield's podcast. I think it was I think it was you, him, and, da and David. 
and uh, it was when the um, the Gary Stewart thing was coming out on Hulu, and they were like, "Hey, Morph, are you going to be checking out that one?" And you were like, uh, "No, thank you, man." You're like, "I'll just let you guys tell me about that one." I'm like, "It's a perfect answer." <laughs> yeah, this. I mean, I, I it's sort of like one of those things you can't help but watch. Like I decided yeah. to watch this one. I wasn't even going to watch this uh, horn one, but and yeah. the shame of it is they had new stuff that was interesting yeah, they had i was going to mention that yeah the, the, the conversation with crabtree they had yeah, uh, yeah. linda jensen they had yeah. interesting stuff where this could yes. have just been an interesting new updated documentary case. about the case yeah. but yeah, they totally. chose to have the hook of this whole you know i i, I, and I again i'm not a, i don't make tv shows for a living um, that's not my business um but i think when they present a show and come up with an idea for a show it's got to have a hook it's got to have yeah. something special that it's differentiates television. from everything else yeah. so what so, can we do to reel in more viewers ah let's mm -hmm. say the zodiac case never happened it was a hoax that's mm -hmm. going to be our hook and mm -hmm. i to me that's a little bit um I, i'm not a fan of that um yeah. you know it's just sort of i, I would have respected it more if they just came out and said let's do an updated detailed documentary with yeah. the most recent yeah. stuff just over a um, case documentary yeah yeah and i i did like the jensen segment i did like yeah. the crabtree segment you know i had yeah I, I'll, I'll say one thing just while we're talking about this i had a conversation with jim crabtree years ago um, and when he was talking to me i could feel the hate he had for darlene coming through the through the phone he, he yeah. Yeah. this is just my opinion i'm not accusing him of any crime i just want to go on record yeah. saying that yeah, but yeah. he in his voice and what the things he was saying about her and i'm not going to repeat the things he was saying about her but he sure, sure. seemed to have a, a hate for her um in that conversation on that day maybe it's just in a bad mood i don't know but he had a, a that conversation that day led me to think I hope they properly cleared this guy because, yeah. you know, he seemed angry with her um, and very, very bitter. Like it was fresh, like it was still yeah. 1969, that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. So it was, it was a very strange. Now, obviously, he came across as kind of weird in that yes, segment. He I mean, he's, he's an old hippie. So, I mean, it is yeah. what it is. But uh, yeah, he's talking yeah. about mushrooms and everything else. So, um, so you know, ask or whatever he was talking about. But, um, you know, just an interesting thing but it was just one more person we had never heard from you know publicly so i thought it was interesting and I, i'd like to see more shows where they do that where they get people to talk uh, never people spoken want to hear from publicly. yeah yeah exactly uh, since you brought it up that being said do you buy his alibi that he was tripping on acid in the canyon and the federal judge saw him i you know i <laughs> i bet you he couldn't even tell you where he was that day <laughs> I, 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 I bet you he probably doesn't even know where he was that day. And he, <laughs> wherever he was, I'm sure he had long hair and yeah. was not the guy that Majot saw. Yeah, know, right. Or he just, just didn't match right. the description. So, um, right. you know, whether uh, he uh, didn't, didn't care about Darlene all that much, it's possible, but I, I don't think he killed her. Since we ended up on Blue Rock Springs, I, I hate to keep, keep but just like a couple follow ups on that, like the Gray Smith story he presents about the argument with Darlene and the man in the restaurant parking lot. And then like Zodiac, like uh, coming up to the car and saying, hey, D, before he shoots him, do, do, do you buy any of that stuff that there was this heated argument and then Zodiac would have uh, would have no, like known Darlene? No, I, I go by what yeah. I go by strictly what's in those police reports. I don't yeah. I don't really anything that's secondhand or yeah. written by especially somebody like Ray Smith because we know that he has gotten you know I'll say it kindly he's gotten he some stuff in the wrong gaps. yeah he's got some <laughs> stuff wrong um, whether that's in, on purpose or not but um, I I'm a firm believer in read the reports go by what's in the reports yeah. don't go by what somebody says in a book don't go by what somebody says years later from secondhand information. Um, rely on those reports that were documented at the time because they have a lot of good information in there. Absolutely. I, I don't know if this is ever something you found, but it keeps asking, did you find anything on Mac's father? Do you know if his, his father was a Freemason as well? His father was a Freemason as well. There you have it, guys. Well, that is everything I have for Morph. We've asked a bunch of you guys' question. We've asked a bunch. Jet Johnson was his car parked nearby. I don't, I don't, I assume you're talking about Blue Rock Springs or uh, Lake Herman Road or Berryessa. We, you know, it's all 
we don't we, we don't have the facts, guys. Sorry. I mean, yeah. we have some of them, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't, he didn't really specify what case that was. Anyway, Morph, appreciate your time. You're the man. Follow at True Crime Guy Citizen Detective Podcast. Get it on YouTube. Get get their uh, Zodiac speaking everywhere. Morph and Rich. That is the Zodiac podcast. That's my favorite one. Appreciate your time, sir. It was awesome when we did the uh, the Zodiac uh, film review. I, I'm telling you, man, if they would have did that Daniel uh, Williams thing in the movie, that would have made a crazy movie scene of him breaking into some guy's house and putting poison in the soda. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, interesting stuff. Good talking to you, Ross. Thank you. Sure. Appreciate it a lot, sir. Have a good day. Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye. That is Mike Morford, guys. That's our guy. He's the man. Morph has been in the case for years. Uh, I don't have a whole lot for you guys. Zodiac Files Episode 4 coming soon. The Gaviota Beach Murders. I think you guys will really enjoy that. It's, we did the shoot up in Santa Barbara. It was almost a four-hour drive for us. Like, sub, share, follow Morph everywhere. Citizen Detective, Zodiac Speaking. If you want to support the channel, you can always go get our comic book, The Dark Rift, Volume 1. Myself and Mac, Escape from Earth. Go get that on Amazon. Get a hard copy, get a digital copy. Other than like, sub, share, I don't have much for you. Zodiac Files coming soon. Okay, Jet, you were talking about Blue Rock Spring. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, you you should know Blue Rock Springs. Uh, the car pulled up, car pulled up right behind him. Watch the movie, Zodiac 2007, Dave Fincher. You'll see, uh, I, I believe they said it was a Corvair. Um, then you got the whole story about Crow saying he got chased by a car. Oh, wait, no, that was, that's Lake Herman Road, I think, right? I might have got those messed up anyway. I'm far from the expert. Uh, Morph is the man. Richard Grinnell came through the chat. He's the dude. Shout out everybody who came through. Epic Freestyle King. Like, sub, share. Zodiac Files, Volume 4, coming soon. Um, we'll get back on the movie reviews soon and stuff. But uh, that is it for this episode. Uh, I don't know. Who do you guys think I should get next? Leave it in the chat. Maybe I'll reach out to Rodelli. Um, there's not too many experts left, guys. So if you want people on the show, hit me up and let me know. Or if you got ideas, let me know. I'm out. Nate Diaz will rear naked choke Jake Paul tonight. Peace.